Hi, my name is Josh Romack, um, and obviously the theme of today is together. So I'd like to talk about the value of spending time with God, um, ways to spend time with God, as well as the value of healthy friendships. Because I think um, healthy friendships are something that are lacking right now. Um, so before I get started, let me ask, how many of you either right now or in the past have ever felt like your walk with God has been dull or somewhat unexciting? Awesome, that's a lot of us. So what do you think, um, how many of you actually want to, to grow closer to God on a day-to-day -day basis? Mm, okay, so I'd like to share some ways that I found really helpful for me in doing so. Um, but before I do, I'd like to talk about something called the fruit of the Spirit. Um, if you don't know what they are, it's totally fine. They're found in Galatians 5, through 23. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So let's exercise some humility real quick. How many of us are not great at at least one of these things? <laughs> I know I'm not. Um, so let me explain how, how we sometimes think of things. Sometimes we think, okay, maybe if I can be more gracious, maybe if I can be more kind, you know, if someone har harms me, maybe I can demonstrate more self-control, maybe if I'm more loving, maybe if I do these good things, maybe I'll feel closer to God, maybe I'll be able to grow closer to God somehow. When in reality, this is not true at all. The Bible says the opposite. See, I don't think the fruits of the Spirit should be something we should necessarily try to produce by themselves. I think they should be a natural result of quality time spent in God's presence. Um, so, I'm sorry. Uh, the thing that's cool about the fruits of the Spirit, it's, it's a metaphor for something physical. So if I take an apple seed, right, and I drop it in the ground, you can't expect the apple or the tree to grow in five or ten seconds. It takes time for the tree to grow and mature. So here's what you need to do. You need to cultivate the soil. You need to water the tree. You need to expose it to sunlight. You need to put in time and effort. And as a result of that time and effort, the tree grows and the fruit ripens. And the same is true in our life. If we want to see spiritual fruit in our lives, if we want to see it manifest in our lives, we have to be cultivating our relationship with God. We need to be spending time with Him. So this naturally brings up the question, how do I spend time with God? What are the best ways? Because, um, I don't know, it's sometimes, sometimes we view as spending time with God as an obligation or a duty um, instead of something to look forward to. So three ways that I find most effective in spending time with God, um, and they sound cliche, but there's a lot of truth behind each one. It's through prayer, through worship, and it's through reading the Bible. Um, so let's start with worship. So if you've been coming here for any more than a couple of months, you've probably seen me on stage playing guitar and worshiping. Well, the interesting thing is that I haven't always liked worshiping. Um, there used to be a time in my life when it didn't seem valuable, it didn't seem exciting, I didn't like to sing, and it's just like the, the entire concept just didn't make any sense to me um, until God came along and he, he told me, he's like, hey, there's so much more to this than you know. So... Here's the thing. I've heard people say, I don't like to worship because I don't like to sing, or I don't like to worship because I'm not a fan of a certain style of music. Well, here's the thing. You don't have to like to sing, and you don't need to like to worship, because worship's about God. Worship's not about you. See, in Psalms, it continually says, lift up a sacrifice of praise. Now, if you think about a sacrifice, the key thing about a sacrifice is that you have to give something of yourself that is not comfortable. You have to give something to God from inside of you that isn't comfortable. And the cool thing about worship is that when we, when we praise God, it's not just a one-way street. See, James 4, 8 says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you, which means that when we, when we worship God, his presence is around us and his presence is the best place to learn who God is because there's a difference between knowing about God and knowing who God is. It's like, let's take the example of reading the Bible. See, reading the, uh, something that Stephen actually says that I really love is reading the Bible for the purpose of just knowing about God won't change your life. But reading the Bible for the purpose of knowing who God is and spending time with him, that will change your life. It's like, think about a best friend. How many of you have ever had a best friend in your life? Okay, so think about it this way. Have you ever hung around this person and then you slowly realize that you start to do things like that person? Like, good or bad, sometimes bad, but... Um, and the same is true for God. If we spend time with God, his, his character attributes rub off on us. And that's why it's so essential. Um, I'd like to also talk about prayer. So I used to not know how effective prayer was. I used to think it was just something you were kind of obligated to do. Um, 
because I didn't always think God was always listening or I didn't always think God would answer prayers. But here's the thing. Here's what I realized is that we have to realize that sometimes God just says no or he'll say yes, but it's in a different time than we want. See, just because God doesn't answer a prayer when you want it, how you want it, in the way you want it, doesn't mean that he's not listening and it certainly doesn't mean he doesn't still love you. So prayer, because I do believe that prayer makes a difference. Prayer makes a difference in our life. Um, it's the thing, we have constant communication with God. See, in the Old Testament, you couldn't just talk to God. There was one priest that could do that like once a year. It was this like crazy ritual. It, it's not like you could just pray to God and he would talk back to you. And it's, there wasn't a constant communion with him. See, now we have that. Now we can talk to God whenever we want to. We have access to the creator of the universe whenever. And I think that's absolutely insane. Um, so lastly, friendships. Something that a lot of people think about healthy, healthy friends or good friends is that, you know, good friends, they always support your decisions. They always make you feel good. You know, they always encourage you, always have your back. They're just kind of there to make you feel good and, you know, always be there for you. Well, here's the thing. That's not true. See, what a good friend does is a good friend calls you out. A good friend encourages you. A good friend challenges you. And a good friend encourages you to grow in your faith. I don't think a friend could necessarily be a good friend unless they're challenging you to grow closer to God. So it may sound great. It's like, cool. It's like, I want these friends. But how do I find them? Because it seems like good friends are harder and harder to get. Well, the number one way to, get, to find a good friend is by being a good friend. You have to be a good friend. You have to challenge your friends. You have to take some initiative. You have to encourage them to grow. Because when you encourage them to grow, they'll respect you. They don't, people don't respect other friends who just... Make them feel good about yourself all the time. It's true. So if you want to see change in your life, surround yourself with people who encourage you to grow. Pray more, worship more, and spend more time in God's word, and you will see spiritual fruit in your life. Thank you.